They're introduced, remember, in Genesis to the children of, of Adam and Eve. And the children were the first two children that were mentioned. It wasn't all the children that Adam and Eve had. But they were representatives for their, for their line or for their generations. One was Cain. The other one was Abel. And we know that Cain slew Abel. That would have been a rather dark thing if Adam and Eve had had no more sons that honored the Lord. See, Abel was distinct because he offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain did. In other words, he honored God. He loved God. So the difference is, if you were just asked a simple question, what was the difference between Cain, Cain and Abel? The difference would be that Abel worshipped God as God required with the blood sacrifice. And Cain brought his own sacrifice or his own worship of God. So one, you could say, was an idolater. And the other one was one who worshipped the true living God. Nathan, you want to open that door? I think it must have gotten locked somehow. Uh, so those would be the distinctives between the two. When Abel died, there would have been a line of godless individuals that would have been through Cain. Okay, when Seth was born, Eve said in Genesis chapter 5, uh, she said that uh, God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. You see it? So, there's Cain, there's Abel, Abel got killed, and there's the Abel replacement, which is Seth. What, was, what is the differences between the two? One was godly, one was not. Yeah, one was godly, one wasn't. Okay, now look in verse 1 of chapter 5. This is the book of the generation of Adam, and the days, day that God created him, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, that means man, man, mankind. And Adam uh, lived, verse 3, in 130 years, begat a son, his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. Okay, and as you, as you read in chapter 5, do you see the lineage? This is not just because it's in the Scripture. It's not because it's inconsequential. Whose lineage is recorded? Is it Adam's firstborn son or his oldest son? Isn't that normal? Isn't it normal... When you, uh, when you trace lineage, to trace the lineage from the firstborn son. It absolutely is. So again, what was the difference between Seth's lineage and Cain's lineage? Godliness, right? Okay. Seth's lineage were the sons of God. They were saved people. They were saved, yeah, they were believing people. They were individuals that believed what Eve believed in Genesis 3, that of the seed of the woman that there would come one who was going to bruise the serpent's head, or who's, who was going to bruise the serpent's head, and whose heel the serpent would bruise, and that was prophecy of the Christ. We know that the seed comes from a man, so this is a supernatural prophecy, and Seth is that line from which God is going to give that seed. Would have been Abel. Abel was killed. Seth replaced that line. Yeah, what's your question? Um, now, I've read that uh, the, the blood came because mm -hmm. of the intermingling yeah, yeah, okay, so then in chapter 6, verse 1, um, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters of, were born unto them, that the sons of God, who have we been talking about in all of chapter 5? Huh? The lineage of Adam? Uh, yeah, the godly lineage, the godly seed, Seth. Okay, what was... What, was, what were we introduced to with regard to lineages at the end of chapter 5? Well, it was Cain and Seth. Okay? So we traced the seed of Seth, and then all of a sudden, something happened to Seth's seed. They saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they married them. And as a result of it, their offspring is, just as the Scripture says, it isn't... Uh, godliness does not rub off on ungodliness. Righteousness does not rub off on unrighteousness. Uh, sin rubs off, not righteousness. And so here you have a lineage of people that sought God. And they married into a beautiful uh, lineage or an attractive lineage of individuals that didn't love God. And the end result was what we see in chapter 6. The end result was, uh, verse 3, The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And see, we have a degeneration 
of mankind. It's interesting when you trace the genealogies that you see that literally Noah would have known Adam's son. In other words, Noah wouldn't have been alive in Adam's lifetime when the first man, before the first man died, but he would have been one generation removed from the first man who was created. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? That, I mean, there wasn't anyone who didn't know where they came from. There was no one who had the question, who made me, who made the earth? They literally knew the first man who walked with God in the garden who could tell them about original sin and tell them about sin's curse and tell them about righteousness and what God was going to do, that promise of the virgin birth, which Adam would have understood, which he would have known based on Genesis 3, 15, and 16. And so these individuals who are rejecting righteousness and who are on the earth wicked with the exception of one man, Job. Not Job, <laughs> Noah. These are uh, the sons of God and the daughters of men. I think it's as simple as that. Now let me deal with uh, the alternative interpretation very quickly. The alternative ter interpretation would be that these are angelic beings come down from heaven, sons of God, quote, and these angelic beings who have come from heaven are some kind of demons or some kind of uh, creature, and they procreate with mankind, and you get this giants as a result. Well, the word giant here is connected with the phrase in, in uh, chapter 6 of the, with the phrase men of renown. And if you read, for instance, Hislop, uh, his book it, that traces all the way back to... Um, uh, I want to say it's not Nero... Uh, Oh, goodness. Who's the guy? That? Nimrod? Nimrod, yeah, thank you. Uh, traces all the way to back to Nimrod and so forth. Nimrod would have been one of the mighty men of renown. Uh, this, the Tower of Babel and these, uh, the, the things that are traced back to the, the deeds of Nimrod, for instance, he would have been one of those mighty men of renown. The word giant, what does it mean? Well, it means giant. Big person? Yeah, it could be a large person. can also be a person who's very large, very great in their deeds, the things that they do. And so, there are some major theological problems with believing that demons and people procreate. First of all, if man is a little lower than the angels, and God has saved man and made him higher than the angels, if angels are simply messengers who are not made in the image of God, what are these beings who are part men, part uh, whatever else? Well, there would be a pretty theological significance in whether or not the work of the cross would have effect. I mean, this would be the sort of thing that you'd go into if you believed in aliens. You know, I mean, honestly, that's the... Uh, we're made in the image of God, and we're very distinct. Did anybody see the news last week on the embryo uh, where they took stem cells and put in the pig's embryo, and they're trying to grow human body parts? And they were actually successfully able to do it, actually able to combine human DNA and a pig's embry embryo. They've been doing that since. Uh, What's that? Well, they have, but I mean, they've been, well, I mean, they, they well, have, I mean, they've been attempting it at least. It's, it's, it's happened. It's done. You know? So, what, let me just, let's just throw a hypothetical question out there for you guys, since Charlie likes these sort of things. <laughs> um, <laughs> the question is what if they brought that thing uh, to, you know, through the full gestation process and they brought it to birth, this pig embryo? Would it have a soul? No. Why? Because it wasn't created by God. I mean, this, they well, I mean, God made the pig. God made the DNA. <clears throat> yeah. well, it doesn't seem like it was. We'll go we'll go back back from there. <laughs> we'll God allow it. To well, but Ecclesiastes says that animals do have souls. I love being devil's advocate. What's that? That's the verse. Is that a living soul? <laughs> You're going to say uh, dogs well, go to heaven. What's that? You're going to say dogs go to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> My dog's in heaven. <laughs> I thought they should enter in, according to Revelation. <laughs> See what happens when you get done early? <laughs> okay. We had a couple of questions. Let's back up a little bit. Now, are we talking about animals going to heaven or are we talking about the pig embryo? Where are we at on this thing? Okay. The question... <laughs> okay. Let me just help you, help you with something, my friend. God is the giver and the taker of life. Uh, some years back, Dr. McClure and Del Rey, they thought that they were going to land on Mars. 
And so a news reporter called and asked, what if they find life on Mars? You know, what if, what if there is other life? And his answer wasn't probably my answer. I think his answer was something like, well, if there, there's life on Mars, God put it there. My answer is there isn't life on Mars. There just isn't. Uh, God made man in his image, made the earth and the, everything else for his glory. Am I saying God could not put life on Mars? I just say God didn't. You know, as Christians, sometimes we get so caught up in the hypotheticals which actually threaten our faith. Uh, could there be a planet somewhere that God created where man didn't fall? Well, no, my friend, if that were the case, God would just nuke the one that did and go with that one. You know, God's not illogical. He's not um, unreasonable. And man was made in his image, and before the foundation of the world, God had a plan for redemption. And so, sometimes we get caught up in some of these questions. I've, I know Christians that are just adamant. They believe that angels uh, procreated with mankind, and there are these, you know, super beings out there. Well, where do you go with that? Where, where, where does that end up? Can they be redeemed? Are they part of the redemption plan? Because the fallen angels can't be redeemed, right? Am I right about that? Okay, so if they've procreated with mankind, and that's the race that they're coming from, and they're part angel, part fallen angel and fallen man, then what are the implications of that theologically? You see what happens when you start playing with those games? You've just messed with the, the doctrine of salvation. You've just messed with the cross and Christ's blood. And so I just reject those things. There's a plausible, good explanation for what the daughters of men, sons of God, the daughters of men are. If you will do the diligence and go through Genesis, you will see that all through Genesis, two lines are traced. This morning, we'll see in Romans a comparison between Isaac and Ishmael. We'll see a comparison between Jacob and Esau. We will see a comparison. Uh, all through Genesis, there is traced a comparison with those who were part of that seed of promise and those who rejected the seed of promise. And that is what Genesis, if you actually want to look at Genesis and look at it thematically and study it uh, exegetically, you'll come to the conclusion that Genesis traces two lines. Those, all of which come from the line of Adam and Eve who fell. But both of those lines are the line of those individuals who believed God's promise and sought redemption and those who rejected God's promise and consequently were doomed or damned. So, does that answer the question, Charlie? You don't like the answer? No, yeah, I do. Oh, okay. it, it does answer my question. Yeah. Okay. But you already knew the answer. You're just asking it. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's that? Go ahead, Joel. Can I have another question? Yeah, we question. do. Yeah, let's go ahead. I mean, Who were the lion-like men in the book of Samuel? What? Who were the lion-like men in the book of Samuel? Oh, okay, give me the reference. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you don't even know the reference and you're going to ask a question? What's that? <laughs> he said lion like You know, Google has some pretty good answers for some of these questions, actually. There's some great articles. Wikipedia actually is getting to be a pretty decent um, Bible commentary, believe it or not. Uh, first Samuel what? Well, I, I refuse to believe it exists. <laughs> well, who are the mighty men? Who are who are David's mighty men? I would say it would be the same thing. Who are the mighty men of valor? It's men of character. What's that? Men of integrity, character. Well, valor would have been the word for Second Samuel twenty three twenty. Okay. Second Samuel twenty three twenty. How can I Google things? Oh, it's over there. See which. I don't know if that's the two line like men you're talking about. Okay. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and the son of a valiant man, and Kabziel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men in Moab. And he went down. Okay, so I, I guess I don't quite understand the questions, because as far as I'm concerned, these, these men, the word like means like in the Bible. When the Bible says this is, the same, this is, or it's not a comparison word. The word like is a word of comparison. So, no, I would say it would be probably, my, my impression would be it would be less their looks as would do with their courage, which really gives you an idea of the courage of the sons of Jehoiada, Benaiah. In other words, these guys have a lion reputation and uh, he killed them. And then he killed a lion too. So, you know, you, you invoke um, comparisons with Samson. 
at this point. So I don't know. I don't. To me, I don't think that's really a difficult passage. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's anything fun there. I should put it that way. What's that? There's just all kinds of weird articles about that. I know. There's. Since the next, you know, the next we could form a, a new religion on it. We could make it the Jehovah's Witnesses, maybe. <laughs> No, I guess that makes sense, actually. Yeah. There it is, some land like, man, maybe like, be kind of like taking me on, I suppose. <laughs> right, Charlie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. All right, Mrs. Dollins. There's another one that talks about there are a couple of lion-like men that joined David's team. Mm -hmm. Man, uh, yeah. But I always thought maybe it was like, Maybe they got the they really brown ugly. hair and yeah, too. maybe type yeah. of the a square lantern draw. I mean, I could actually kind of like Lion King then, basically. Yeah, yeah. they lion like. Yeah, that's maybe where they got the idea. Yeah, Walt Disney did. They're just really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, this is fun. I guess we're all lion like of some sort. <laughs> Some perhaps more so than others. So some a little more lion than others. <laughs> Lee. So do you think the order of the days of creation with the creation of plant life before the creation of the stars allows for the existence of plant life on other planets? No, I don't. Well, <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> So you don't think we can infer anything from the order of the days of creation? About plant life and other planets? Plant, animal life, etc. Yeah, because the, our, so your, your point is that's an answer to the question. The, the plants were created before the sun, moon, and stars were, so there's no plant life on them because they were created after plants were no, created. No, no, the other way around. Okay. Plant life was created oh, okay. before the sun, moon, and stars. I got gotcha. you. So okay. I see the possibility of there being plant life on other planets. That'd be fun to talk about. But then like, animals were created after the stars, so I don't see the possibility of animal life existing on other planets. I don't believe so. I, I do know that there are there is plant life in, in space right now. But we took it there. Right. So the answer is no. I think God's not that interested in in space. Actually, He didn't make anything in His own image. You know, oh, this this all does come to a serious point. As silly as a lot of that is, um, the manner of creating man—that that God didn't speak man into existence, but He formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul—is so distinct. That, say, that is the distinction between man and animals. It is the question of do animals go to heaven or not, and so forth. Um, as, as lovely as your pet perhaps was or is, it would ruin heaven for me if your dog went there. So, <laughs> God's got his own heavenly animals, and they're better than your horse or cow or dog or pet or whatever. There will be fishing in heaven, and it'll be better than the fishing that's here. There, there are fish in that sea that flows out of the throne of God, you know. And I'm fishing there too. I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna get me some waders or a nice boat or something. And um, wait, in wait, all what seriousness, kind of new earth? there's gonna be no sea. Uh, yeah, but there will be water that flows out of the throne of God. No, no, that's the millennium. Yeah, I think Fair that enough. they're, yeah, okay, so you're saying it's going to be like, Miss Stellas, don't ruin heaven for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, in verse 22, he showed me a pure river of water of life, it clears a crystal, proceeding out of the throne of, of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there a tree of life, which bare uh, 12, or 12 manner fruits, and yielded her fruit out every month in the Leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no curse. Um, and it goes on, so so on and so forth. I believe there are other places that I've cross-referenced to Revelation 22 and verse 2, where this, or in verse 1, where the river coming, river of the water of life, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And of course, that's not millennial. That's um, that's after the millennium. So there is water flowing, and there'll be fishing, and I'll be fishing there. So where's the sport when you can see all the fish? 
It'll be heavenly. <laughs> It'll be, we're going to take it another dimension, you know. Hey, wait, I'm going to have fish at the marriage supper of the lamb problem. I was like, <laughs> um, doesn't say fish, though. This is not in this liver. instance, but you know, fish. don't ruin it for me. <laughs> There's fish. If the tree has so, fruit, why wouldn't the water have fish? You know. Rusty. There's going to be animals. There will be animals, but they won't be yours. Okay. Your dog went into the ground. Your cat's gone. Uh, i got to be careful saying that because Nick and Holly had one of their dogs die last week. So they're not here this morning, but people get pretty sensitive about their animals and so forth. So my insensitivity is not always the best thing. Did anybody notice I don't have pets? Oh, but did. I ate them all. <laughs> I killed them all. <laughs> so you killed all your guys. Yes, ma'am. You got questions. So, you eat your... so then, who are the sons of God in Job? Verse. They're, uh, that's, it's a, okay, that's a good question. Okay, so if the sons of God in Genesis 6 and the, and the daughters of men are representative of Cain and representatives of Seth, then what of Job? Well, there were individuals that were called. In other words, the language there is similar but it is not, it's a reference to angelic beings who are fallen, who still had some sort of access to God. Satan came up before God with this meeting. And so, the, to me, the point of that passage of Scripture is that God's on the throne. And the individuals, there, there was at a point when Satan was cast out and he no longer can go to heaven. The accuser brethren, according to Revelation, can no longer accuse the brethren any longer. And so he did have the opportunity. He was coming here in the um, in the office of an accuser of the brethren. That's what Satan was doing. And I'm sure he was there accusing other individuals. And God said, what about Job? You know, have you seen my servant Job? And that was his answer at that time to it. And of course, this is not a, Job is not a passage of Scripture teaching that Job was a perfect man. Job, this, the Gospels taught in Job as well. But Job was a, an upright man, and uh, he would have been not only exemplary and individual in his time, he would be in our time as well. So, I don't know if I answered the question, but they were, they, were, uh, they were angelic beings that had access to God, but they're not the same beings that you see in Genesis 5 and 6. And again, if you study Genesis, if, if you study Genesis without pulling verses out of the Scripture, out of context... That is the theme of Genesis, is to trace the two lines, those who believe and those who rejected God. That's how we come to, to Israel, ultimately, and God's redemption plan through Israel. So, really is a theme of Christ all the way through Genesis. Anything else? Oh, we're out of time. We're two minutes past time. How'd that happen? We were having fun. Oh. Man, I thought we'd have some, like, theological questions, but no. How many angels can stand on the head of a pen? <laughs> Let's dismiss with prayer. Father, thank you so much for what we learned this morning about crowns in heaven. And Lord, we want a crown of righteousness, a crown of rejoicing, Lord. We want these crowns that are incorruptible and that can't be taken away. Lord, if it be your will for us to even have a martyr's crown and to suffer loss of life. God, it is so good that of you and so, so characteristic of you that you made us not only to be able to live life, but, Father, to be able to have re eternal reward. We don't deserve, we don't even deserve eternity, far less, to be able to have the opportunity to be equipped to be able to do good works. Lord, we recognize as well this morning that our good works were not possible without the blood of Jesus Christ. Our righteousness would have been filthy rags. And you made it so that our good works, because of what you've done for us and because of your Spirit working those things in us, or that we can have eternal reward. And again, as we reflect on this truth, we're reminded of God that you are just so much better than us. You're so much higher, so much above, and you're so good. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Glad you all made it this morning. Didn't freeze somewhere. <laughs>